This video is sponsored by Linode. Use the link in the description to get a $100 60 day credit. More on them a little bit later. Now in this video today, we're gonna to be checking out this device right here. What this is, is a little touch screen monitor that you could actually install a Raspberry Pi inside of. And in addition to that, we're gonna be taking a quick look at the new Pop! OS Pi image that you could go ahead and install and try out on your Raspberry Pi today. It's still in beta, but we're gonna be giving it a quick look. Now this right here is the monitor and it's actually a pretty cool device. I've been using it for the last couple weeks or so as an external monitor and I'm going to talk more about that a little bit later. We haven't installed the uh, Raspberry Pi in it yet so I'm actually going to run through the installation and actually do that on this video today. But first I already unboxed it and uh, let's go ahead and cover the components and everything that it comes with. So actually opening this up here, of course we have the device. The device itself is a 10.1 touch screen display and it has a couple different resolutions that you could go ahead and choose from. They have a 1280 by 800. The one I have right here is actually the uh, 1920 by 1200, so the highest resolution that you can get. And they do have a couple more options, including a smaller seven inch monitor if you're interested in that. And the screen itself is gonna give you a 60 Hertz display. And according to their Amazon page, the actual responsiveness of the touch display is three to five milliseconds, so you shouldn't notice any lag at all. But then actually unboxing all the other components, we have a USB-C to USB-A cable. We have a three pin touch cable and a small screwdriver to actually enable that touch functionality. And of course it will ship with a standard HDMI cable to be able to use the external display. And then we have a few different board adapters for the IO of the device, including an HDMI A or D and a micro and type C USB, depending on the actual model of Pi you're using. Now actually taking a closer look at one of these components, I have the HDMI one here, and this would be used if you have a Raspberry Pi 3 or under. And you can see right there, this is where you'd plug the HDMI into the Pi. And then looking over here, we have the little connector that will connect to the actual internals of the monitor. So overall, that's pretty cool and it's gonna really minimize the amount of wires you're gonna have to actually manage in this device. And then of course, we have two different side panels. And again, this depends on your exact model of Pi. And then we have the user manual. And this user manual is actually pretty cool. I wish other companies would follow how this uh, user manual is set up and formatted. You can see really good colors, clear instructions, the pictures are high resolution. So you can actually kind of see what's going on in this. So I wish everybody would do that. So with that, what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually take this guy apart and uh, throw my Raspberry Pi in it. Where is he? There he is. Right now it's in the little can of kit, so I'm just gonna disassemble this. And let's see how easy this uh, installation is. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is pull out this little screwdriver that came in the same bag as our uh, touch connector. So first thing, let's go ahead and take off this back panel real quick. And just as a side note real quick, my next investment in this channel is gonna be better lighting for things like this. All right, so I went ahead, took the screws out, and one thing before I pop this off that I wanted to point out, the fans obviously are right here, but it looks like we have a nice little spot that you could go ahead and actually mount this monitor if you'd like to. Additionally, you can see we have some speakers built into it, so that is always nice. Even if they don't sound good, it's nice to have that option. Oh, there's another screw hiding, so let's take this out. And now, theoretically, this should just pop off. There we go. Okay, and you can see we do have one fan pre-installed. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that as is. Unplug that. And there we go. There is our Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and get our IO here. So this is our faceplates, and you can see right here it says Raz, well, you might not be able to see. It says Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 3, so we are gonna go with the 4 one. Let's go ahead and slide this one out and replace it with our Raspberry 4 IO. And now with that in there, it looks like there's a little bit of clear plastic on these screws, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Yeah, so don't forget to remove that. All right, and just looking at the layout of this, I'm going to assume it's gonna be easier to connect these adapter modules first. So let's go ahead and take these out. So I wanna make sure to connect into the right one. So if I position this right here, it looks like it's going to be the port closest to the Type-C connector. So let's slide this in there. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in our Type-C adapter, like so. And one thing I'm noticing that uh, is a substantial problem is where the spot for the SIM card is. Once I install this and I screw it in, 
it's going to be a real pain to go ahead and switch out that SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now. Now the card I'm putting in now is just your regular Raspberry Pi operating system because I want to test this out with something that's not beta first. I mean, it looks like we might be able to change it out, but we're still going to have to take off the back plate to do so. So to put these ports on or to hook up the adapters, I'm going to slide this up and push the uh, USBs and all that through. And then I'm going to try to put this on here without bending any of these pins. So just like that and just like that. There we go. So it's installed. So let's go ahead and screw this down. It did come with some screws for your Raspberry Pi. All right, so we got all that screwed in there. It's installed. All these are connected properly. So now what we're going to do is actually hook up this uh, little touch cable. Now actually taking a look at the touch interface for this, we do have two options. One, we could either use just this little cable here and solder it so it's all done internally, or we could go ahead and use this and use this uh, USB here to go ahead and make the touch interface work. Obviously, if you're going to be using this on a permanent basis, this is probably going to be your best bet. It's going to look a lot cleaner. And you can see here where it actually talks about soldering it, how to do it, or you could just go ahead and go with the external USB method, which is what I'm going to do because I don't have the equipment and I am lazy. So to do this, I'm going to actually run this through the top port here, give it a plug in. There we go. And then we go ahead and plug it into one of these USBs here. And that's what we got. Obviously, this isn't the prettiest looking way to do it, but we do have options. And before we do close this up here, right here, you might notice a little tiny switch. And this actually makes it so you can control the backlight of the monitor. And in addition, if I go ahead and plug this fan into this other fan port, it's going to go ahead and actually reverse the fan. So with that, we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and actually close up the Raspberry Pi here. Now pop in this last screw I almost forgot to take out. And we got it all installed. And beforehand, I just wanted to show off some of the built-in I.O. You can see we have our power connector, a USB Type-C, a full-size HDMI, as well as an audio input. Or is it an output? It says audio. I'll clarify on the screen now. <laughs> so let's go ahead, plug this in here. And I could hear the fans firing up, so it just turned itself on right away. And it does look like it's booting up. We got the little blinking cursor up there. And yeah, there we are. This is the Raspberry Pi desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with this for a little bit and kind of show you guys the features. Show you guys the touch, so you can see it kind of working already there. If I drag, you can see I go ahead and select things. I'm going to hold this up to the mic so you can kind of hear how loud the fan is, so I'll be quiet for a sec. This fan is definitely a little bit louder than I'd prefer. And it sounds like it's a little loose, so next time I open it up, I'm going to have to give it a, a tighten for sure. Alright, so here is the Pi, and I do have that uh, wireless USB keyboard connected. But we're going to be using the touch screen for the actual selection and uh, grabbing all these windows and moving them around. So let's go next. We This looks good enough. Next. Now let's set up our password real quick. And our taskbar does fit, so we'll go next. And let's go ahead and connect to our Wi-Fi network. So right now it's updating, and I can say so far the actual touch controls on this is very nice. It's very responsive. I don't really notice too much lag. Uh, some of the smaller UI components are kind of hard to grab, but other than that, it's it's going pretty good. All right, so I just restarted it after the update, and it's still all working pretty good. Let's go ahead and open up our file manager real quick. Close out one of those, and try to manipulate some of this. So if I open up music, for example, just a nice double tap, theoretically. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there is a little bit to get used to when it comes to actually... Uh, interacting with the file systems and all that. If I go ahead and touch and hold, it doesn't really seem to be doing too much. If I go ahead and close this out and actually open up our terminal, we could actually use this to go ahead and SSH into one of my instances over on the node, which is the sponsor of today's video. The node is the largest independent cloud service provider out there. They have a whole bunch of one-click installs, making it really easy to launch game servers, websites, really whatever you want. With a host of Linux distributions to choose from, they're going to have a server option for you. And like I said earlier, if you go ahead and use the link in the description, you get a $100 60-day credit to go ahead and try out the node today. Now, the one thing I can actually really say about this so far is this operating system does not feel like it's built for touch. I could go ahead and jump through here. Let's go graphics. 
And I mean, the actual screen is very responsive and it works nearly perfect if I open up a web browser real quick. And then let's head over to one of my favorite sites, techhut.tv, and try to use some of just the general zoom functionality. You can see everything works perfect and it's very responsive. So that was this monitor with the Raspberry Pi operating system. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take off this back plate and uh, flash the new Pop! OS ISO to it just so we can kind of get a feel how uh, Pop! OS would be on a, a touch screen device or a tablet. I think that's gonna be super cool. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, we're booting up. Here we go, welcome to Pop! OS. Let's go ahead and run through this uh, welcome screen here. We've got our US keyboard, next. Uh, our Wi-Fi, I'm going to go ahead and connect real fast. And you saw there we had a little keyboard come up, so that's really nice. That's not something we've noticed in the uh, the last operating system we went ahead and took a look at. All right, let's go next. Uh, we'll keep that disabled for now. Let's select our time zone, which is right over here. Go next. We have online accounts. I'm going to go ahead and skip that for now. Next, let's go ahead and type our name. So the keyboard did come up. I'm actually going to use this keyboard this time, so I'll just go... Uh, B, Brandon, and start using Pop! OS. And the fact it came with that keyboard is kind of big. I was gonna spend some time to try to find a virtual keyboard, but Pop! OS just including it is wonderful. All right, and we're going in. It looks like we're having a little bit of uh, issues with the initial resolution here. It's a uh, uh, fairly large, can't really uh, manage this at the moment. So uh, welcome to Pop! OS, preferred layout. I'm gonna try to jump into settings real quick and fix this. So head over to desktop. We probably want to go to displays. And from here, we can see the display's a little lower, but I think the problem might be the fractional scaling. Is this? Yeah, so this isn't it. Okay, let's go, ahead. let's try to manipulate this real quick. Let's go to 1080p, see how this looks. Okay, that's looking a lot better, keep changes. And from here, let's go back over here, make sure everything's right. It's at 200% now. Can I drag this window? It's very touchy, but it's doable. So let's go ahead and disable fractional scaling and put this to 100%, apply that, keep the changes. Okay, now that's almost too small. Let's go ahead and try to drop that resolution again. Let's put it back to 1200 by 800 and see if it's way too big again. Okay, keep changes. All right, now this is looking good. So that's one thing about this monitor too. Honestly, I should have probably asked for one of the lower resolution models. Uh, full 100% scaling 1080p on this does not look that good. It's very difficult to use. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this at the default. Let's go ahead and keep both of those buttons and center it. And we know all about the application launcher and we can use touch gestures. Let's keep it at the dark and all done. Start using Pop! OS. So it's looking really good so far and the responsiveness of this operating system is pretty good. We saw a little bit of buggage there and it probably has something to do with uh, the betaness of the software because it was at the right resolution and all that when we first booted up the other operating system. But let's go ahead and go back into some of our system settings here and let's open up about. You can see the bottom bar is kind of glitching a bit. Uh, Pop! OS, we have seven or eight gigs. Uh, is running at 4 point or 40.4 of GNOME on the X11 Windows system. You can see when I drag, I have that bottom kind of flash there. Let's actually change that to the dock to see if that kind of fixes that. So we'll go up to desktop, uh, go to dock. Oh, not workspaces, let's go to dock. Maybe make this a little bit bigger so we can see all of our settings. I'm trying real hard, there we go. Okay, so let's uh, disable this. So now it's not extending and it still kind of glitches a little when I move it around. Again, hopefully they fix that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and close this out and let's open up our applications. So here is everything or nothing. Nothing's really coming up. If we go to workspaces, we have our uh, horizontal workspaces here. Open up applications again. We're not really getting anything. Uh, if I go and do it through here, let's see if that changes anything. Nope. But if I can search, yeah, you can search. So we're not seeing the uh, full list out of the gate, but that is okay. So now we have Firefox opening up. Uh, Firefox generally doesn't have as good touch support that we see on Chromium, but we'll go ahead and go over to Tech Hut TV and uh, take a look here. So you can see it's not gonna do uh, 
as good of a job. I'm going to have to grab this and probably pull it down. There we go. If I go ahead and open up the terminal here real quick, I wonder if I could get that. Oh yeah, the keyboard does come up with the terminal. And it's cool the pop shop's on here. So I mean, if I go back here, you have your typical pop shop. We have a uh, uh, Steam, Lutris, obviously <laughs> Steam's not gonna work on here. We have Tilix. If I go ahead and drag, it is gonna go ahead and move around through. It is a little laggy, but not too bad really. One thing I should also get to go ahead and test out the touch is uh, Krita. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in and let's install Krita. Ah, oh, it's a sad day. I guess we're not gonna be able to launch Chromium. Dang it, Jim, Krita didn't work either. And this one failed. So, unfortunately, let's see what the actual issue was. Okay, so I'm having issues expanding the storage on this device, so it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to uh, install any applications at the moment. But overall, the general UI and everything, I, I almost kinda want a Pop! OS tablet. I think that would be one of the coolest things that they could do. Let's go open up the uh, file explorer here real quick. And it seems to be working a little bit better than the uh, the file explorer in Raspi OS, which is nice. Everything's a little bit more responsive and quick. If I throw that to the top, it's going to expand, go down, close it out. Everything's looking good. And this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to do a separate thing on this as an external monitor. You could go ahead and go down in the description to see the extended review of this device. Also with that, I'm really looking forward to actually uh, having this work properly, but as far as the actual touch screen and everything, it is remarkable. Uh, just as a summary, if you're somebody who's getting this for just a external monitor, you have better options. But if you do have a Raspberry Pi and you want the added addition of using this as an external monitor, this is a pretty good buy, honestly. Now, later on for sure, especially when they actually release the non-beta version of Pop! OS on the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna be taking a much deeper look than we did here today, uh, including performance and things like that. But just for fun, I still ran uh, the ARM version of Geekbench on the same Raspberry Pi on both the Raspberry Pi operating system as well as Pop! OS. And just based on the initial results, I can say that I'm fairly impressed with the uh, beta of Pop! OS thus far. Check out the links in the description if you're interested in seeing the uh, more in-depth Geekbench results for these two tests. And there'll be links down below to anything else I mentioned, such as this device right here, as well as the Pop! OS downloads and things like that. So with all of that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can join down below, head over to Patreon, do whatever you want to do. If you don't feel like doing that, simply subscribing to this channel and liking this video is more than good enough for me. Uh, with all that said, have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.